Danny Acosta, Fight Magazine here with Marlos Kunin. Coming into uh, your fight coming up on January 30th with Christiane Cyborg Santos. How are you prepared to fight someone like her? Well, um, this, this fight really motivates me to... I always train hard and I, I never uh, lack uh, any training. But this time uh, it's... Um, it's really like every training, she's in my mind, you know? So when I'm, I'm, I'm exhausted and tired, I, I keep on working out because I know she's working twice as hard and I put it in my mind, you know? So um, uh, we're doing a lot of striking, but also the wrestling and uh, the ground game. Uh, we do not forget about that because I think there is, uh, I can be better in that than she is. You won your last fight via submission. Uh, walk me into that fight and, and how that went for you and, and how you feel that's going to contribute to uh, you know going forward into the title. Well, uh, coming out, I knew I really had to make a good impression because it was my debut. Uh, but I do not remember a lot of the fight. I saw some pictures back, so that's why I could, uh, you know. Um, but um, I really wanted to make a knockout in the first round because it was my debut. But uh, I think I knocked her down and then what I remember is that I wanted to do a side choke but I was too aggressive and I fell over and I ended up in the guard. Yeah, and working from my back is, is like breathing to me. So that was like uh, my trainer, before I entered the fight, he said uh, to me, he said, I think you're going to win on the armbar. And I didn't respond because I was like, no, I'm not going to win on the armbar. I will knock her out. But he, he was right. So, uh, yeah. Um, your fight was not televised. Do you feel that was kind of a misstep because you are going to be fighting for the title next and not everyone knows who you are? Uh, no, because uh, I'm very uh, thankful to Scott that I can can, can fight at uh, strike for. So uh, uh, for me, it was okay. It would have been perfect if uh, if this fight would have been aired because it was a very short fight. But uh, I'm I'm happy with it, and this time it will be broadcasted. Um, I know it's impolite to ask a lady about her weight, but you know that's something that comes a lot with Cyborg. Um, you know she walks around very heavy. Uh, what weight do you walk around at, and, and do you have trouble making the 145 division? Currently, I think I'm at 148, well, something about that. 149. Ah, well, that's 148, I think. Another impolite question, and I'm sorry to keep asking, but um, Christian Cyborg Santos was just rumored as uh, you know talking to Playboy about per, uh, being in their magazine. I'm never gonna do that. <laughs> And so, can you tell us about what you want out of your time in Strike Force? You want to know um, you have the title shot coming up. Is it more important for you to to grow as a person, and as a fighter, or is it about being the champion? No, because uh, I want to fight. Um, I'm fighting uh, since the age of 18. I started out working out at the age of 14, and uh, I won this big tournament when I was 19 years old. And after that, honestly, that didn't came anything. And now it's exploding, uh, MMA is exploding in America, and Scott is giving the women a chance. And uh, to me, it's, when I say it's a dream come true, it comes from my heart, because uh, I want to prove to people that I can fight, and I'm a good fighter, and I want people to see that. Are you intimidated by Cyborg? Because it seems that you know, she intimidates a lot of people. If I was intimidated, I wouldn't fight. G going into this fight, are you doing anything special because it is a title fight? In terms of your training camp? No. Uh, I just, I, before I was working uh, at an office, I quit my job, so that's the difference. <laughs> now that you have the opportunity to be a full-time fighter, are you seeing uh, big improvements in your game? Uh, as in conditioning, I do. Because um, uh, if I look back on the past years, it was conditioning. Uh, that was always the problem, not my technique. So, uh, yeah, that's going good now. <laughs> the, the lightweight title, the female title in Strike Force, you know, it was Gina Crano was supposed to be the face of MMA. Now Cyborg stepped in as she won. Is that something that's important to you to, to become, you know, the female in mixed martial arts? Uh, no, what to me is important that uh, female MMA, well, I think it's a stupid name anyway, but it's just MMA and women also do it, but uh, that, that, that that grows, you know, so there have to become a lot of girls into the sport, and Gina's done a great job, and I hope she comes back. Sarberg is doing a great do uh, job, but I also hope that lighter girls will uh, get some more promotion, and I want normal women to, to see that it's normal for women to fight. It's not only a men's job, you know, so... What's been the hardest part about this road, getting to Strike Force, getting to you know national television, like like your fight will be on? 
Um, well, I love working out, even if I can never fight on a, on a televised uh, uh, fight. It wouldn't matter to me because I will keep on training. But um, I have made a lot of sacrifices to, to keep on training. And uh, my parents have told me often, like, please quit it, Malouz, and you can't train, but do not do the fights anymore. And uh, stuff like that, and choices in work and in school and stuff like that. And nothing came back from it. So it was a long road, and, and now it still will be a long road. But for me, this is uh, already... Um, uh, an accomplishment that I can fight in strike for us. Are they supportive of you now? What did you say? Are they supportive of you now? Yeah, nah. <laughs> when you ask my mother, what is your daughter doing? She's, oh, she's doing judo. And the next time, she's like, oh, she's doing karate. And I'm saying, no, mommy, it's MMA. MMA, what, what does it stand for, you know? So they're really, yeah, they're kind of proud, but I don't tell them too much about it. Do you feel that uh, bringing home a big chunk of gold will help change their mind? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe we can go shopping. <laughs> um, wh what can fans expect from you on January 30th? A big war. Thank you, Marlos. Appreciate it.